Hello and welcome to Tech Talk Thursday. I'm your host, Ray Marquina, and we are back at it with another series, this time exploring how we can trigger a data set refresh from Power BI within our Synapse Analytics pipeline using Power BI REST API. We'll be exploring how we can set up the proper developer settings within Power BI. We'll be also creating and configuring a security group to allow us access to use the Power BI endpoints. Adding a Power BI dataset refresh mechanism to your pipeline can help give your pipeline a more complete and refined design and is also going to help with efficiency as you won't have to deal with setting up multiple schedules on the Power BI side or the Synapse side. You can just manage and maintain one schedule within your Synapse pipeline. This is going to be part one of a two-part series, so if you don't want to miss part two, hit that like button. Also consider subscribing to the channel. We do our best to upload new content for you twice a month. With that out of the way, let's jump right on in. To begin, I first want to familiarize ourselves with the Power BI REST APIs available from Microsoft. So if you Google Power BI APIs, it will pull up this website for you at learn.microsoft where you get a list of all the APIs available to you for Power BI. And this is gonna help things uh, this is going to help you do things like embedding, administration, and governance. For our particular use case for today, we're going to navigate over to the datasets category. And if we scroll down, we should find refresh dataset in group. This is going to be the endpoint that we're interested in grabbing for today. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that call. And now navigate back over to our Synapse pipeline. Now we can actually go ahead and create a new pipeline. Let's go ahead and give this a meaningful name. We'll call it Pipeline Dataset Refresh. And to execute that call, we are going to bring over a web activity. Let's also give this a meaningful name. We know that it's a post, and let's call it a Refresh Dataset. All right, and then under the settings tab, we have a little bit more configuration to do. So let's go ahead and uh, place the value of our, of our post call into the URL. And we can do that by adding dynamic content. We don't need the post here, so I'm gonna remove it. What we do need though, are two parameters to replace this group ID and data set ID within here. You can see that it's asking that we provide our own values here. So we're gonna do that by way of parameters. So let's do that next. So under parameters, I'm gonna create a data set ID and a group ID. We're gonna go back to that web activity and replace those values. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the group ID first and then the data set ID. Now, in order to get this to be correct in the expression builder. I'm going to use some string interpolation here across my parameters. So the way you do that is just with the at symbol and curly braces around each parameter. Finish off with the data set. And there you can see that we're not getting any more syntax errors. So our expression builder is configured properly. I'm going to click OK. The method call for this is a post. And if we go back to the, um, uh, the endpoint here within uh, Microsoft, you can see that it's saying that for shared capacities, only notify option can be specified in the request body. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I am using a shared capacity for this. So again, your mileage may vary depending on your capacity type for your organization. So let me go ahead and put that into my JSON body and close that off. Now for authentication type, we are gonna be using a, a system assigned managed identity. So later on, we are gonna give our Synapse workspace the proper permissions, but know that for this scenario, we are gonna be using system assigned managed identity. Now for the resource URL, uh, if you're unsure what that is, just very easy to go Google it. So you can do Power BI resource URL and it will give you that link. So I'm gonna copy that and pasted it. One little gotcha with this though, is that it is case sensitive. So if you leave this capital H, more than likely this activity will fail. So just make sure that you make that a lower case all the way around. So now our web activity is mostly configured. We still need to configure the data set ID and the group ID with actual values. So 
We're going to do that here in a little bit uh, when we create our workspace. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the Power BI admin settings that we're going to need to enable in order to ensure that SPNs or service principles can hit these endpoints. So for that, I'm going to navigate over to Power BI and under settings, there is an admin portal. We're going to click on that. And you do need admin permissions in order for this to work. So if you don't have admin permissions, consider asking your organization if you could have them or work with IT so that you can get the, uh, the proper settings configured so that this can work for you. So under tenant settings, there is a developer settings section. So we are going to need to enable a couple of these settings. That's going to be allow service principles to use Power BI APIs. Uh, we're also going to want to use the read-only admin API, so we'll want that one uh, enabled as well. And we are also going to want to have the detailed metadata uh, setting enabled as well here. And as you can see, you have a couple options. You can use, uh, you can specify to the entire organization, or you can specify to specific security groups. In our case, we're going to create a new security group add our service principal to that group, and then add them here. So let's go ahead and do that. So for that, I'm going to navigate over to Azure Portal and go to Active Directory. Under Active Directory, I can navigate over to Groups and create a brand new group. The group type should be Security, and then you can give it a name. So I will call this Security Group uh, Power BI API. Give it a description if you want. The membership type should be assigned, and this is where you can add your members. So I'm going to select a member. Now remember, this is going to be the, the, the name of your system assigned managed identity. So in our particular case, it is going to be the resource that is our Synapse Analytic workspace. So I'm just going to search for that. So that is Omnidata Demo Workspace. See that it pops up for me. I'm going to go ahead and select it and then create. So you can see that that has created successfully. Now we can go back and add the security group to those settings so that we can enable the proper configurations for us. So to start, let's go back to developer settings, allow service principles to use Power BI API. Now I can add my security group. And there you can see it's popping up. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply, and then add it to the read-only APIs as well. Add and apply. And then it's probably just good practice to have detailed metadata also enabled for that security group. So let's go ahead and also add that. All right, and as you can see that it says that this might take 15 minutes to take effect. So if your execution of the uh, endpoint doesn't work immediately, you might need to wait just a little bit. So now that we've configured the, uh, the developer settings, let's go back and create the workspace and, and uh, configure the proper permissions there as well. So I'm gonna create a brand new workspace. Let's call this demo test workspace, WS. And let's go ahead and apply. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is upload a brand new report here. So I have a, a port Power BI uh, report here that has freight data that I've been working with. And the object type that I'm interested in here is data set. Uh, but before we jump into getting data set in the group ID, let's go ahead and manage the access here. So here is where I'm going to add my security group that has the uh, service principal assigned to it or as a member. I often find that adding the security group might take a little bit in terms of permissions, right? Actually waiting that 15 minutes. So what I find probably uh, a way to make that faster is just by adding the service principal directly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in this particular case, but uh, please use the security group uh, when when doing this, probably is best practice. And for the permissions, I'm going to give this admin permissions, and I'm going to go ahead and add 
and now you can see that they have been granted, our service principal has been granted at admin access to this workspace. And that should be all we need to do in terms of getting our authentication to work. Now, the last thing that we need to finish off is the data set and group ID. So under the report that I just uploaded, we now have a, a data set record. So if you click within it, you're going to see that within the URL, you get your group ID as well as your data set ID. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those values, starting with the data set ID. So let me go ahead and paste in that data set ID. And let's go back and copy the group ID and paste it into our parameter. All right, there we go. And that should be all we need to do in order to configure this properly. So the next thing that I'm going to do is take a a log of when the data set was last refreshed. So you can see it was refreshed when I uploaded it at 827. It is now 829 my time. Let's go ahead and trigger this web activity and see if we can get this to, uh, to refresh. And you can see that it did succeed. If I go back to Power BI, with a little bit of luck, this will update. And there you have it that it did update to the appropriate time. You can see that it's now 829. So that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you for tuning in to part one of our two-part series, working with Power BI's API to perform data set refreshes. In our next video, we're going to harden this pipeline to monitor the status of our data set refresh. The scenario that I walked through today is a happy path scenario for data sets that refresh quickly and do not fail. But what would you do if your data set took longer to refresh or even if your data set failed? How would you configure a pipeline to handle that use case? Well, if you're interested in the next video, please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you can be first in line to see it. I want to thank you for joining today's Tech Talk Thursday, and we're going to see you in the next one.